was a rough one for the Brooklyn Nets. Over the course of the season, the Nets have taken care of business against teams that they're supposed to beat for the most part, but not the case here. The New York Knicks were motivated. They were desperate. Losing streak. Uh, they questioned themselves after that defeat to the Washington Wizards earlier in the week, and the Nets just didn't seem ready for the challenge. The Knicks controlled the action for the most part throughout all four quarters. Throughout all four quarters, and I would also say they really controlled every area of the floor. I don't know if you want to start on the defensive end, some of the struggles the Nets had in stopping the Knicks or on the offensive end from the three-point line, the lack of scoring in the paint. I mean, there's a multitude of numbers yep. that really stand out to you, but the fact that the Nets are third in the league in points in the paint. So when all else fails, even when they struggled in the course of the last few games of shooting from the three-point line, they averaged close to 53 points in the paint and had just 14 against this Knicks team on top of shooting just over 26% from three. Spencer Dinwiddie is the one player that was able to get some offense going, yep. and Timothy Luau Cabarro the, Cabarro, the only other net that hit double figures with 10 points. So th those type of things really show what it was like on a night like this at Barclays. I think we've seen a trend as well when Garrett Temple and Torian Prince just don't have it. The Nets have a tough time generating offense. It's a lot of Spencer Dinwiddie, and that's because he has to do it. There yeah. just haven't been a whole lot of options. So while the Nets have played well in the absence of Kyrie Irving, they're now 12-7 and seven in the 19 games that he's missed. There are times where you can just feel it. The Nets need another scoring threat to try to balance things out. Yeah, without a doubt. And I think even you could look at the most recent game, for example, against Atlanta. For as big of a game as Spencer Dinwiddie had, who are we also talking about after the game, the big punch and run that Garrett Temple was able yep. to come out? What DeAndre Jordan did, some big knockdown shots by Joe Harris. So uh, there is no question that some of those other key players, the consistency of their play is still needed. Um, and they've done some really solid things for this group throughout the course of the season, but nights like this, it's very apparent that Spencer Dinwiddie can't do it all himself, and some of those other guys need need to be knocking down some of those open looks and shots. And it speaks to the fragility of the depth right now that's uh, certainly being tested for the Brooklyn Nets, and a challenge coming up. They're on the road at Houston, at Minnesota, at Dallas. This is a difficult part of the schedule that the Nets are now embarking on and coming off a loss that hopefully lights a fire under them as well, well and i think when you look at these teams even for example houston minnesota and dallas these are all teams very much in the thick of fighting for even at this early part of the season playoff positionings yep. and where they stand and how tough the western conference is and some of those star players that you're going to see there on the offensive end but also for the nets the need of the offense to start clicking and knocking down some of the three-point shots because all of those teams are, are very tough tasks and um you know it, it comes down to putting this one behind you but also learning from it, making sure that you're not straying too far away um, from some of the execution, some of the freshness, and, and some of the continuity that we've seen amongst this group. No holiday cheer tonight for the Brooklyn Nets. They fall to their Cross River rival, the New York Knicks. Back to you.